Cool. Hello and welcome to a new episode of Lotus Rising. We are here with Ina Marie with Zip It Up Meals, correct? Yes. Okay, just make sure. <laughs> We're so excited to be here. I'm so excited to have you Thank here. You. And how are you feeling today? I'm feeling wonderful and today <laughs> I have a brunch for you. Can't wait, can't wait. Yes, I'm so excited to talk about this food, talk about the brunch that we have going on. I want to know more about it. But first, I want to talk a little bit more about you, about yourself personally, so everybody can know just a little bit more about you and what you like to cook as far as um, what, uh, how, first of all, how long have you been cooking? I've been cooking ever since I was a child. I remember having a birthday party where all my friends from school came and I cooked them French toast burnt my hand. We had so much fun running around and eating. And I realized that my French toast was really good. And my my friends were all maybe 12 years old. And they enjoyed it. And they were shocked because I don't know if they were cooking it that young, but I actually started cooking younger than that with my mom. My mom is a fabulous cook and she cooks around the world cuisines. So I've never been limited to just one style, one flavor. So your mother dish. actually is the one who taught you how to cook. She did, and my father. Your father as well. So your father was a good cook as well as your mother? Were they equally good? He had his specialties because no one can touch his children. <laughs> no one to this day. I try to, he's in heaven, thank you know, rest his soul. But I try to embark on his memory of, did you put the jalapeno? How big did you slice it? It was yeah. just delicious chili. Yeah, and, and I'm sure the spirit of what he loved is always like within the energy of the space that you're in. It is because I don't like beans. <laughs> That's yeah. the main component of chili. So. Um, and what are your favorite meals to cook or like most requested by family or friends? Um, most requested, I uh, do potlucks for work for my children or my adult kids. They're now the youngest is 25. And they've always asked me to do a pan of spaghetti, a seafood salad. Um, because I don't limit myself, I don't have a stop. Yeah. If I taste it and I really enjoy it, I can recreate it. Yeah. But there are times when, like anyone else, I'm human. I want to go out. I want that that feeling yes. of being catered to. Yeah, and then trying something different. And it maybe even inspires you to create something new that you're like, hey, I got an idea right. to do something. That's right, because you can put a different spice from something that you've tried into your one of your dishes, and that can make it go next level. And what inspires you the most to create new recipes? It seems like that might have a little bit of like something. Now, in the creating new recipes, I dream about it. Wow. And it could be <laughs> an amazing oral. And I, said, I was like, I saw all this food in my mind. It's a yes, dream. You I'm can like, put all the vegetables too in there. about food. <laughs> yeah. Right. Who doesn't? It's so delicious. <laughs> but some of the combinations that I come up with is because I've had the opportunity to try different dishes, to try mm -hmm. different styles, yeah. to mesh them together and make them what I would like to eat or my family would like to eat because we don't like a lot of different things yeah. but when you are developing your palate it is critical to try new flavors my husband when we first got together he didn't eat rice he didn't eat uh zucchini cabbage my husband eats all three of them now oh <laughs> maybe because that's where it's a vegetable land. he that's actually amazing. enjoys them now your palate can change because you're trying new things out. Yes. And yeah, definitely. With that being said, what are your favorite herbs and spices to cook with? Some of my favorite things are the fresh basil and parsley. Mm -hmm. We have you Italian have basil parsley. Basil. And we have regular parsley. Show them. Show them we them. also have cilantro leaves. Cilantro is so delicious and pico de gallo. Mm -hmm. Any type of Spanish type of cuisine that you may want to create yourself. The difference in the leaves tells you this is regular parsley. It's a curly leaf. But flat leaf is, is very flat. And today I picked up some basil. In a minute I'm going to grow my own because they are kind of expensive. Except for these. These you can get less than a dollar. So when they are no longer good, 
You can replace them easily. Oh yeah, I'm your hand. I definitely agree with you as far as growing them on your own. You should be growing the organic route and growing our own plants naturally because everything we can buy in the store we can literally grow. Yeah, because right some of those there. are really good in some of the teas that I know oh, you yeah. are creating. Yeah, and even dehydrating those plants and turning them into a powder form and creating other teas with them. That's so true. A way to benefit us and just I mean, eating it is a form of just herbal medicine. I mean, it's it beyond It goes what through your system, electrifies your cells, yes. rehydrates you. There's I mean, so much goodness in yeah. the fresh, but I cannot go against dry. Let's say you can't find this in the store. Dry is good. Dry basil, dry cilantro, dry oregano. You can use your dry goods and there's a way that you can intense that flavor by frying it before you actually apply it to your dishes. It increases it. It's, it, it never tastes flat. It's never dull. It's yeah. always a popping in your taste buds. And that's what everybody wants, because you want to feel like your meal's flavorful, it's fun, it's exciting, it's new. Yeah. And but it's not loaded with salt either. Exactly. So therefore, your blood pressure is not going sky high. You've used other elements to bring out the natural and flavors. yourself with these natural herbs that you're adding to your meal. Yeah. With that being said, what is the one, two, three, quick step, maybe 10 to 15 meal for like a dinner date night with your husband and like something delicious and quick to make that maybe like somebody doesn't have a whole lot of time but they want to make something really tasty. I say if you um, do a shrimp dish, shrimp takes less than no time. They turn red, you can flavor them with garlic, you can flavor them with uh, white wine. One of the things that I've discovered, instead of always going to the wines, the vinegars. Red wine vinegar, champagne vinegar, rice vinegar, and also your white wine vinegar. They taste very strong with the wine flavor. You may have to offset it with a pinch of sugar, so because you know vinegars are naturally sour. Yeah. Except for balsamic, which is sweet. So I like to take those flavors, put it with some shrimp, you can throw some rice, cut up some chives, boom, you're done in 15 yeah. minutes. Okay. And you're smoothing on that couch. So what is the difference with the red wine vinegar combined versus just the red wine by itself? Now, red wine is delicious. However, they use red wine most of the time in such as like a stock or you can add it to a beef dish, you can add it to a chicken dish, but I haven't seen that as much. I know I don't personally do it. I usually use it towards a beef dish. Beef flank, English roast, I will go ahead and saturate it with some red wine. And spaghetti. Oh my goodness, if you've tasted it in spaghetti. Oh, can we have that next time, please? Next time we can do it, we can do it. Um, like I said, the vinegars, you're not going to use a whole half a bottle of wine. Mm -hmm. I mean, a whole half a bottle of vinegar. But you will use a half a bottle of wine. Yeah. So to clarify that, wine, yes. Vinegar, no. Cheers to wine, yes, and vinegar, no. Yes, now we wine, know. yes. Vinegar, no. Vinegar, no. That yeah. only takes like a couple of tablespoons to get that same flavor. And what you're doing is you are giving it an acid. And that acid helps break down either the meat or the sauce and makes Breaks it, it all delicious. It so combines flavor. and marriage with the other flavors and it heightens up Ooh. your palate. We're getting excited. Okay, with that right. being said, we definitely need to move on to the cooking segment of this episode, which I'm very excited <laughs> about because we are rising here within the space and the energy and the frequencies. And I smell this amazing smells in the air. I'm ready for you to well, smell this meal. So the only thing we've got going right now well, is all we have water. is some boiling water, but I can already feel the aroma of like the energy, <laughs> which yes. is going to be cooking. Yes. So with that being said, let's just go ahead and get this started. I'd like to okay, well, hear uh, what is the meal that we're cooking. We are going to have sun-dried tomato basil chicken. Ooh. One skillet. After you've boiled these noodles and you've gotten your chicken basil all completed, all you do is add your noodles and it's to the plate it goes and to your belly it comes. Oh, my belly's ready. Yes, it's coming, it's coming. <laughs> so what we're going to do is I have some boiling water. 
But because I've been boiling for a few minutes, we're going to need to add some more to put those noodles in. And Ruby, I'm sorry. It's okay. There's nothing but love bumps in this kitchen. <laughs> so uh, we're going to add some oil to the water. I've already salted it. And this is going to make all of my noodles slide. So basically like a little teaspoon of oil. I'm going to go ahead and put the noodles in. And then I am going to set my timer. I cook my timers. I don't like burnt food. I can't. And who wants burnt food? It ruins it for me. Unless it's meant to be burnt. Who wants burnt food? No. <laughs> so I am going to put the whole pound of angel hair pasta in. And uh, get all my little bits and pieces in here so we don't have people coming out of the pot. I'm just going to spread them out a little bit. In the meantime, I am going to go ahead and get this started. Now I've got the stove on high because we're going to boil it for maybe nine minutes. Angel hair pasta doesn't take that long. Though. Only nine minutes. Okay. I'm going to taste it after six because I want the noodles to make sure that they're not overcooked. If you have overcooked noodles, you kind of like burnt it. You ruined the dish. So, in this other skillet, I've already started heating it up. I'm going to add some olive oil, extra virgin olive oil to it. I've got my chicken separated. It has to be washed and clean. Now, recently they've been coming out with news that you shouldn't wash off your meat. But my question is this. With chicken, it has slimy pieces that are still a part of it when it comes out of the grocery store. I have to wash it. My grandmother yeah. said wash it. I'm going to wash the chicken. I don't want slimy chicken. Better to be safe than sorry. So in this dish, I've already combined cumin, paprika, Ooh, minced garlic. Can I smell this? Mm -hmm. Some oregano. Before it starts, it's like, that's what it looks like. And I'll go ahead and I will post the actual ingredients so that oh, you know. Wonderful. I'm gonna go ahead and place it all over the chicken. And I've salted and peppered my chicken. Now I'm going to make sure that my chicken is covered with all of the flavors. Because we do not wanna want Here's the sizzle. Here comes the sizzle. Now you may say, why such a little pan? But that's all the space that we need. And we're going to cook this up. In the meantime, <laughs> what we're going to do is we're going to pretend like this is already further along. I have issues with my hands so I typically use my scissors for everything and do you like do you recommend a certain kind of steel or quality steel of any sort for cooking, cooking? scissors these okay. happen to be KitchenAid scissors but your cooking knives come with scissors they are excellent what brand is that if you don't mind me asking uh, this is a fiberware fiberware they're, not, they're a pretty decent quality they're uh, very good they were one of our rivals when I worked for Vector Marketing. Oh, yeah. did you? You yes. worked for the Nines Company. I worked for Vector Marketing. I used my to sell cut code coloring. Did that. Oh my gosh. First job out of high school. <laughs> what I'm going to do is a cheat. As a, well, I'm sorry. This is a cheat. See, I'm cheating, so I was afraid to say it. <laughs> I'm going to take my scissors. I'm going to make nice, small, little mm. cuts of the parsley instead of chiffonading them on the counter with my knife. It's parsley. This works so much better to me. Boom. It's a great recommendation for everybody. Boom. It's a lot quicker. Boom. I get my first flavor in. First flavor's down. And then I'll commence to get it in there. This is when you're getting ready to start smelling some good food. After I get that down, 
I'm going to take a couple of basil spears, approximately four of those. And I'm going to do the same thing that I did to the Italian parsley. Just make thin cuts, thin cuts, and it's very fast. This allows time-wise cooking. We are right now waiting for the chicken thighs to get brown on one side. Well, push the flavor in, push the flavor in. Got a few people that's come out of the pot. Yeah, it's rising. And we're gonna get our sun-dried tomatoes. You can get them at any local store. They're only a couple of bucks. So we're not asking you to cook with very expensive products, but they're products that you'll use over time. So once you buy them, you won't have to buy them again. Mm -hmm. At least for a month, unless you went crazy on your sun-dried tomatoes. Definitely. Now I like to take the sun-dried tomatoes out. They're in an oil. This dish will seem a little oily until we add the cream to it. I am going to go ahead and cut these up as well with my scissors because I'm going to flavor this whole pot. That you it is done on one side. Almost, almost there. And now I could definitely smell the aroma in the air. You smell it? Walk. <laughs> it's walk. not just oh, walk. boiling water. Walk. No, it's not just boiling water. You have to walk to smell the aromas in the air. Smells good in here. Angel hair pasta is stir. And just because I like it, I'm gonna add some sun-dried tomato to the noodles. Our noodles should come out a little bit pink. And that is, again, more flavors. Okay. We're back. Now, I'm going to try to look. 